Barack, we're here to send a clear message to you. We're not gonna we're not gonna give up until Bashar al-Assad is gone. You need to stand up for human rights. These are the fundamental principles that our country's always stood for. And how much more blood do we have to be shed see shed until you take some action? When you ran for election, you promised hope, you promised peace and justice for all American citizens and for those abroad. You promised to stand and support democracy and support fairness in order to increase the number of American allies. So President Obama and members of Congress, don't forget Syria. They need us. They're trying to combat those of Iran, Hezbollah, and, and, and the dictator in Syria that every day is claiming the lives of men, women, and children, those that are innocent. Syria is bleeding, President Obama, and we need you here. We need your support with the American people who support a free Syria. Senator McCain, we've got your back. We will, we will come to speeches with you. We will come talk to the Senate floor. We're ready. We're ready to capitalize on your momentum. Yes, guys, we've got to send in some humanitarian aid. If we send in humanitarian aid without a military backing, what good is that humanitarian aid going to do when you have a relentless regime that's full of thugs? They're going to kill the humanitarian relief uh, workers as well. The United States has to take a leadership role with the neighboring Gulf states. Okay. We do those two things and Syria will be free. Mark my words, I'm telling you right now, Syria will be free and we will not give up until Syria is free. Harris. Harris and Sam. Sam. And what states are you guys from? Massachusetts. Virginia. Well, we need to stop. We need to help all of, all the people in Syria. I mean, we got to stop the bombings. We got to stop the war crimes. We have to step in and do something at least just help and support because, I mean, the rest of the Middle East is just sitting back and watching all this happen. So someone's got to help. Send a clear message that killing your own citizens like that is not acceptable, and we need to send them medical, food, and any other supplies that would help keep them alive. Uh, Sam, I see you wearing a yarmulke, yep. my Jewish brother. Yeah. Okay. Does it matter what religion you're from in order to defend these people in Syria? I, d I wouldn't think so. Doesn't, doesn't. Killing is wrong no matter what religion you subscribe to. Absolutely. Harris, you agree with that? I agree fully. Uh, I am the, from the city of Chicago in the state of Illinois. You are from Barack Obama's hometown, is that correct? Oh, yes. Okay. It is. <laughs> Obama, you know the First Amendment, the freedom of speech, the freedom to assemble. That's exactly what the Syrians are doing. And it should not be a right for only Americans, but a right for everybody. So what I ask Obama is that please, please step in to Syria and give those people that right. That's the only thing I could really say. I currently live in Georgia, originally from home Syria. Stop the killing now. Syrian lives are in your hands and we need your support. Here's the American anthem behind me. We are so proud to be Americans. We're proud to be Syrian Americans. We want our people back home to be able to enjoy the same liberties and freedoms that we have here. Absolutely, that's that precious First Amendment, isn't absolutely. that right? Absolutely, absolutely. Even the humanitarian aid, they're going to need some protection. Yeah, the Assad thugs and the regime thugs are brutal, and they will obviously have demonstrated that there is absolutely no end to their criminality and the brutality that they will carry out against the civilians of Syria. President Obama, members of Congress, we will look forward to being there with you in a free Syria so we can have a friend and ally in that vital region and not an enemy. All right, we've got Cody from Arkansas, is that right? That's right. Well, I mean, this is, I mean, it's ridiculous that so many people are dying. I mean, look at this. I mean, people, they're crying out for help, and that's what they need, is help. And if they if they can do it, then they, they should. They should help. Now, the United States is the world's strongest power. Do you think we have the ability to help? Oh, yeah, definitely. And would you be for that? Yeah. Cool. Members of Congress, you're hearing it directly from the mouth of Cody. A construction worker from Arkansas who's telling you stop the killing in Syria and intervene and help the people of Syria. DC. Oh. I would just say to find some way to stand for peace and justice in the region. It's a wonderful country, wonderful people, and they're being sort of hung out to dry right now. So it makes me really sick to my stomach. How soon would you like Congress to act in, in terms of getting humanitarian relief over to the Syrian people? Like right now. Uh, I was born in Virginia. I live in Washington, D.C. Okay. I think that the people of Syria do not want to be uh, subject to the repression, as in an overarching uh, uh, dictatorship actually uh, uh, oppressing the people and trying to silence them and uh, committing horrible acts of violence against them. Uh, um, you know, I get a little choked up, I'm sorry, but like it's a... Uh, 
I, I think that it's absolutely horrible for, you know, to consider all of the atrocities that have been committed against the Syrian people. And I would hope that the people could uh, basically, I, I would hope that, that um, people could realize their common humanity and that the regime would stop killing people. From New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jer Rima is actually a pediatrician from New Jersey. Yes, correct. I want to ask him to save the Syrian people from the torture of this regime, to bring this regime down. We need that so ba badly. People are suffering. People are dying. This is a humanitarian crisis. Please save the Syrian people. I've been seeing a lot of horrible things. There is no medical, you know, basic stuff to help even the minor wounds. This is not fair. You know, people would be wounded, would be easily, you know, uh, treated. But unfortunately, even the first aid uh, aspect, it's not available. As a fellow physician, uh, how do you feel when you hear about these doctors that are being killed because they're, tr they're attempting to treat people? Again, this is horrible. You know, in, in this century, nothing like this happened. You know, this is unacceptable. You know, some countries, some powerful country need to step and say, okay, enough it is enough. I feel so sad. There have been nights that I really, you know, cried, cried, cried. And I wish, you know, I can do something to help. You know, I, I hope that being here, you know, will make the Obama administration hear our voices. Zena here from New Jersey? Yes, New Jersey. Great. Are they not humans? Do they not have rights? Okay. You have to like put politics aside, forget are we going to gain anything by helping Syria? What are they going to help us? Like, And just help these people. Like, It's been a year. How many more people have to die? I agree entirely. If we don't help the uh, Syrian regime and let them know that their lives and, the, and, and their blood and their suffering mean something to us, then they have no other alternative other than to seek revenge, other than to turn to, to more extreme factions. We have to be there morally to provide them an option, to tell them, Syria, we support you, even if it is just words, even if it is a no-fly zone, something simple. It doesn't have to mean military intervention, but to tell them, Syria, we're there, we care for you, and there is an alternative to, to this oppression and, and to this uh, uh, anything that's against democracy, which is the Assad regime, unfortunately. And, and show these people that we're not as bad as like they've been taught over the years. I'm from Virginia. In Syria, as you see here, there are Palestinians, there are Libyans, Egyptians, Christians, Muslims, Druze, atheists. Everyone's here together. Assad is not singling out one faction. Assad is going after anybody who wants a voice, anybody who is speaking out. He's targeted journalists from France, from America, from New York, from Boston, from Chicago. He's not going after a certain faction. So Syria is united, and Syria is united in its opposition, and so is the Arab world. What we're seeing here is a trend. The Arab Spring, people are rising up in all areas to finally say we've had enough. We've had enough of dictators, we've had enough of oppression, and they deserve a voice, just like we truly value, just like just like this is the cornerstone of our, our fundamentals in America. They too want that liberty. It's the most heartbreaking thing in the world. You, you look on TV and you see children, and you, you see your brother, you see your cousins, you see your friends, you see older women, you say, that's my grandmother, that's my aunt, that's my mother. They have feelings just like we do. Uh, their life is just as important to them as it is us. Day by day, you see parents dying, you see children on their bedside saying, Father, please wake up. And so I tell President Obama and members of Congress, imagine that this was your children. Imagine that these were your relatives, your family. Put yourself, as, as, as much as you possibly can, put yourself in their shoes for so much as five seconds and try to understand the pain, the suffering that they must be feeling when a parent can't protect their own child. Try to understand what that feels like. It's impossible, it really is, but, but for a moment, try to connect with them on, on so much of an emotional level. I know Obama is the father of two beautiful girls. Imagine Sasha and Malia in that position, what would you do? You would stop at nothing. First of all, I'm a proud American Syrian. My message is peace for humanity. I couldn't imagine the United States Marines bombing Washington DC for the last year. Can you imagine an army bombing a city after city after city after city after city, my whole homeland for the last 12 months? Would that last in the United States for 11 seconds? Absolutely not. So my, my message is for humanity to stop the, the crimes against humanity that are 
anti-humanity, anti-American, anti-Syrian, anti-mankind. That's my message. It shouldn't take us 12 months to stop killing Hamza al-Khatib and killing Kashouj and murdering the best brains of Syrians. Mr. Obama, the inventor of the iPhone, is from Syria, from Homs. This regime has killed thousands of people. As an American Syrian, as a proud American Syrian, you need to make a decision to stop the crimes against humanity, against my people, your people, because people are people and this has to stop. Thank you.